White mistresses and white wives knew one thing back in the days of slavery. They could not get their white husbands and white boyfriends to do kinky things with them. Back in those days, white men liked to be strict and rigid. Therefore, fetishes and kinky things seemed to reduce their manliness and masculinity. In other words, they would never accept kissing their wives' and girlfriends' feet, giving them special treatment. Instead, they expected their white wives to do everything for them, giving them pleasure. In this, they forgot that white wives and mistresses also had sexual expectations. This made white mistresses frustrated. However, they had a solution. They could use their black male slaves to fulfill these fetishes and fantasies. But what fetishes and kinky things white wives and mistresses wanted their black male slaves to do for them? In this video, let's find out. The Black History Archives We are always told that white mistresses used black male slaves for sexual pleasures. However, the details are not shared, and one assumes that it was acceptable. But once you know about the fetishes and kinky things white mistresses engaged in with their black male slaves, you might feel a bit shy. White mistresses sometimes forced black male slaves into role-playing scenarios designed to degrade and humiliate them. These scenarios involved making slaves adopt highly submissive roles, emphasizing their lack of power and autonomy. For example, a mistress might demand that a slave serve her in explicitly sexual and demeaning ways, such as pretending to be a servant or an obedient pet. Such acts could involve performing sexually explicit tasks that reinforce their subordinate status, like kneeling before the mistress or performing intimate services on command. The intention was to strip away any semblance of dignity or self-respect. Sometimes the role-playing included the use of costumes to further emphasize the scenario, such as dressing the enslaved men in specific outfits that marked their subservience or using objects that symbolized their lack of freedom. Sometimes, white mistresses would ask black male slaves to play the role of their husbands. They would dress them in their husbands' clothes, imagining them to be their husbands, while fulfilling their thirst for fetishes and getting handled hard. Another aspect was the exoticization of black men's bodies, treating them as exotic objects of curiosity and desire. This could involve making the enslaved men perform acts that highlighted their physical attributes in ways that objectified and degraded them. Slaves might also be forced into scenarios that likened them to animals, reinforcing racist notions of black people as being less than human. This could involve crawling, being led on leashes, or performing acts that symbolize their supposed primal nature. Bondage played a significant role in these dynamics. Enslaved black men were often restrained with ropes, chains, or other tools. These restraints went beyond mere symbols of control. They physically limited the slaves' movements, making them entirely dependent on their mistress's will. Being bound heightened their sense of vulnerability and underscored their lack of autonomy. Discipline and punishment were also key elements of this power dynamic. Mistresses used whipping, spanking, and other forms of physical punishment to assert their dominance and control. A whip, for example, was not only a tool for inflicting pain, but also a means of psychological terror, constantly reminding the enslaved men of the threat of violence. However, things would seem confusing for black male slaves when sometimes white mistresses would ask to be spanked lightly. Doing this was beyond black male slaves' imaginations. They could not understand the twisted and distorted nature of the sexual pleasure white mistresses wanted to derive from that. Submission was another critical aspect of this control. Mistresses would force slaves to perform acts that demonstrated their subservience, such as kneeling, bowing, or performing intimate and degrading services. The aim was to strip the enslaved men of their dignity and autonomy, cementing the mistress's absolute authority. In some cases, Mistresses might have even coerced slaves into roles where they had to pretend to dominate their mistresses. 
Here's a reminder to please support us so we can make more videos for you by subscribing to our channel and giving the video a like. We want to build a strong community and we need your support. Let's continue now. Enslaved men faced extreme public humiliation as part of their subjugation. In many instances, enslaved men were forced to engage in sexual acts on command, sometimes in public or semi-public spaces. These events could take place at gatherings, parties, or other locations where others could witness. The public nature of these acts was meant to magnify the humiliation, turning the enslaved men's degradation into a spectacle for others to see. Forcing them to perform in front of an audience was not only a means of control, but also a way to visibly demonstrate the mistress's authority and power over them. One common fetish among white mistresses involved forcing black male slaves to worship their feet. Enslaved black men were often made to kiss, lick, and massage their white mistress's feet. Each of these actions served as a ritualistic display of total submission, turning the act into a profound demonstration of their lack of autonomy. While feet were often a focus, mistresses demanded that enslaved men kiss, lick, or otherwise worship other parts of their bodies, such as hands, thighs, or even breasts. These acts were deliberately designed to assert dominance and reinforce the enslaved men's subservience. Each kiss, lick, or touch was not merely a sign of submission, but a way to make the enslaved men feel utterly objectified and degraded. Full-body servitude represented another severe expression of this control. Enslaved men were often forced to provide full-body massages or perform other physical services for their mistresses. These tasks went beyond simple acts of submission. They were meant to underscore the idea that the slaves existed solely for the pleasure and comfort of their mistresses. The fetishization of legs and stockings was another aspect of this dynamic. Mistresses demanded that enslaved men caress, kiss, or worship their legs, further emphasizing their lower status and the mistress's dominance. This ritualistic attention to legs reinforced the power structure and served as a method of psychological domination. Enslaved men were reduced to performing acts that underscored their subjugation and highlighted the hierarchical nature of their relationship. Stockings also played a significant role in these fetishistic practices. Enslaved men might be ordered to handle, put on, or take off their mistress's stockings as part of a ritual. Then comes erotic asphyxiation, or choking, another disturbing practice used by mistresses to assert dominance. This involved applying pressure to the slaves' necks to restrict their airflow, creating a sensation of suffocation. Such breath control heightened the enslaved men's vulnerability, making them acutely aware of their dependence on their mistresses for their most basic need, air. However, surprisingly, one can never expect that white mistresses would demand black male slaves to choke them. Yes, they wanted black male slaves to hold their necks with hands and apply pressure during a sexual encounter. What's more, forced oral sex was another extreme practice used by mistresses to assert their sexual dominance. Enslaved men were coerced into performing oral sex on their mistresses, a practice that placed them in an extreme position of submission. This wasn't just a physical act, but a stark symbol of their complete lack of control. Buttocks were another focal point in the exploitation dynamic. Mistresses emphasized their buttocks as part of the sexual exploitation, forcing enslaved men to kiss, caress, or worship this part of their body. This practice was another act of submission and humiliation. Spanking was also common, with enslaved men being coerced into spanking the mistress or being spanked themselves. This form of punishment was not just about inflicting physical pain, but was deeply symbolic, reinforcing the mistress's authority and the enslaved men's subordinate role. Then came breast fetishization. Enslaved men were sometimes forced to kiss, lick, or suck the mistress's breasts. These intimate acts were publicly displayed to emphasize their submission and humiliation. Such practices were designed not only to assert control, but also to strip away any sense of autonomy the enslaved men might have had. 
Furthermore, mistresses directed enslaved men to engage in nipple play, compelling them to handle or stimulate their nipples. This act further demonstrated the mistress's authority, reducing the enslaved men to mere instruments of her pleasure and reinforcing the power imbalance. The fetishization of hair and grooming was another method used to assert control. Enslaved men could be forced to touch, caress, or kiss the mistress's hair, an act meant to elevate her status while highlighting their own subordination. Genital and forced sexual acts were central to the sexual exploitation of enslaved men. They were coerced into performing oral sex on their white mistresses, a deeply degrading act that underscored their total lack of control. This forced oral sex was a clear demonstration of the mistress's dominance, turning the enslaved man into an object of sexual gratification. Forced intercourse further emphasized this control, showing how the mistress could dominate the enslaved man's body and degrade his sense of self and autonomy. The fetishization of hands and manual labor was also prominent. Enslaved men were forced to kiss or lick the mistress's hands, a practice that highlighted their submission and reverence. Additionally, they could be forced to use their hands to sexually stimulate the mistress, reinforcing the power imbalance and their role as objects of pleasure. Facial features were also subjected to exploitation. Face sitting, where the mistress would sit on the enslaved black man's face to force him to perform oral sex, was a particularly humiliating practice. This act starkly illustrated the mistress's dominance and the enslaved man's complete subjugation. Facial worship, which involved kissing or caressing the mistress's face, further enforced submission and highlighted the power dynamics at play. These practices demonstrated the depth of control exerted by the mistress and the profound degradation experienced by the enslaved men. Isn't it true that the origin of fetishes and kinky things is the sexual tension between white women slave owners and their black male slaves? What do you think about these distorted sexual encounters between white women and black male slaves? In the comment section right below, share your thoughts on whether this is happening to this day, with one difference being consensual. Share your experience on this. Would you like us to make more videos? If yes, please support us by subscribing to the Black History Archives and clicking the bell icon. You can check out more videos on our channel too.